So, keeping with true blogger style, um, I'm reading two posts from my blog. Um, both of these actually are from Nerve.com. My other blog is CompyGromTube.com. And um, I actually asked my readers, I was like freaking out today, I was like, you know, it's an erotic reading series, so I should probably read something sexy, but everyone's going to be drunk, so maybe I should read something funny, so I don't know. And so I like sent it, and then they emailed me back, and um, some people said sexy, some people said funny, so I picked two shorter. <laughs> one's sexier, and the other one's funnier. So um, we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> okay, um, this first one is called The Smell of His Scent, and this is a true story. All my... Um, Dating and sex life is for public consu consumption. It's there in the blog. And so uh, this was actually a guy that I met here in the city who was a New York Times bestseller. Um, so here we go. Okay, it's called The Smell of His Scent. <clears throat> the morning after, an arm brushes across my bare back and awakens me. It's 8.02 a.m. I'm drunk and comfortably naked in an unfamiliar bed. I open my eyes and examine every inch of exposed milky white flesh encapsulating the man lying next to me. Tufts of dark hair protrude from his chest, legs, arms, head, and groin. As I run my fingertips across his chest, we're tucked together neatly between the soft white sheets and his mattress. I sleep alone in my own bed. It feels oddly comfortable to wake up in his. The man's brown eyes are still closed. He doesn't require vision to find his way toward me. Reposi repositioning himself in the pillow, he presses the full weight of his strong body against mine and dips his head to kiss my dark nipples. As I inhale the smell of his scent, the small moan, moan that escapes my lips lets him know that I'm satisfied. For reasons that I don't want to share publicly, I didn't expect to be in this man's bed. Eleven hours ago, in a completely respectable setting, he and I dined on sushi with two other people. I thought I'd leave the group after I ate my meal, but the conversation flowed as smoothly as the drinks did. By the night's end, we finished a couple bottles of sake and drowned our livers in dirty martinis, Japanese beers, and Coke spiked with Jack Daniels. Someone suggested that our quad return to his place. Once we arrived, we divided ourselves into two couplings, us and them. I'm not sure where they went because the two of us sneaked away to his bedroom. We must have peeled off layers of our clothes because they were carefully strewn across his bedroom floor. Naked, we explored each other's bodies. I confess that I didn't usually hook up on the first night. Actually, I drunkly giggled. It's usually the opposite. I think I'm too picky. Do you know it's been like nine months since I slept with someone? I felt self-conscious and stupid as I heard myself speak the words. We continued talking, and he eventually slipped me a condom. Intoxicated, I ripped the wrapper open and proceeded to lose it um, somewhere in the lush folds of his bed coverings. It was the only piece of contraception he had, but I wanted him. I craved his scent and his touch more than anything. But because we were too drunk to find the latex in the dark, unfortunately, my vagina never experienced the pleasure of his penis comfortably stuffed inside of me. Fade to black cuts the next morning. My brain still soaked in alcohol as we laid there kissing. I have to go home, I told him. <clears throat> he caresses my warm skin and places trails of soft kisses along my spine. Four play ensues as we thrust our sexual engines back into full gear again. No, really, we have to stop, I tell him. They're going to get me all hot and bothered just with the subway. He tells me that that's, in, that's his intention. Delightfully eager to provide pleasure, he says, I want to get you wet, because I want you to think about me on your ride home. I let out a quiet whimper as my body twitches with gratification as his tongue touches my clitoris. Once we're dressed, he escapes to another room to retrieve my coat and my purse. While he's away, I quickly and nosily check around his room's artifacts. There's a framed photo of Muhammad Ali hanging on the wall. His nightstand supports a stack of books topped with Nicholas Davidoff's The Cashier Was a Spy, The Mysterious Life of Mel Berg. I noticed many publications littered all over his apartment, but I expect nothing less from him, a brilliant man whose work appears in the New York Times bestseller list right now. The scribe, who is equally adept with his tongue as he is with his pen, returns with my coat and my purse. Great boxer, he says, as he nods his head towards Muhammad Ali's photo, noticing me examining his things. Great athlete, I reply. Probably one of the best the world has ever seen. As he, walk, he walks me to the elevator and presses the number one button. Goodbye kisses are exchanged, and he says the most famous three, le three little words in the dating world. I'll call you. <laughs> Dressed in clothes from the night before, I ride the elevator four flights down to the building's lobby. As I exit the building, the winter's frigid winds slap me across the face. 
Walking, I feel cold and alone on New York streets. I pull my coat zipper two inches closer to my neck as I remember the warmth of his bed and the comfort of his arms. I can still smell the scent. I can still smell his scent against my skin. His taste is still in my mouth. On the phone later that night, I tell a friend, I'm sitting right there. <laughs> I don't know if either of us would have let things go as far as we had had we not been drinking. The raw sexual attraction was nice, I tell her. He felt so good. Hey, she responds, you're human, you're both adults. There's nothing wrong with that. Besides, you had fun, didn't you? Hell yeah, I said, without missing a beat. Well, she says, that's all that matters. You know what? I think she's right. Okay, so this next one is, I do a series. <laughs> I do a series of blog posts on my blog, um, a funky brown chick, but I actually posted this one in Nerve. Um, open letters, you know, we all live here in New York City and you have random encounters with crazy people in the streets and stuff like that or at random places and um, you never see them again and it's like um, you wish, hey, you know, wouldn't it be great if you know you could tell them, you know, whatever, you know, tell whatever your story was or how you reacted to whatever happened um, and you never get that chance because you don't see them. So I write open letters like to the hot dog guy who ripped me off and tried to charge me two bucks. I'm not a fucking two ways. And so it's like these open letters to different people in the city. And um, this one is called Open Letter to the Man Who Told Me He Wanted to Piss in My Mouth. <laughs> Dear Super Freak. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> okay. Dear Super Freak, I asked you to repeat yourself because I couldn't quite believe what I heard. You want to do what? As if you press playback on the iPod of your own voice, you repeat it. I'm going to piss in your mouth. <laughs> in case you were drunk or you don't remember the context, please allow me to refresh your memory. I'm the girl from that party. Yeah, that girl. I walked up to you and introduced myself because I thought you were fucking gorgeous. And within the first five minutes of our conversation, I knew we were going nowhere fast. It's not you, it's me. I didn't feel a connection, but fuck if I didn't care. You were hot, so we kept talking. <laughs> Three beers for you and two glasses of wine later for me. We were standing at the bar ordering the final round when your hand began to dance along the smile on my back. And that's when you said it. You leaned into my ear, pulled me close, and murmured, I'm going to piss in your mouth. <laughs> Even have time to react because you immediately dipped your right hand into the back of my pants and tried to slide your finger along the slit of my ass cheeks. Naturally, I stopped you. When you removed your hand, you placed your index finger under my nose and said, Smell your asshole. <laughs> you said this with a straight face, and I thought, Why, God, why? <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were drunk or criminally insane. I admit it, I'm a down with a pinch on it for light erotic spanking, and I certainly have my kinks. We all do. But even among the most sexually enlightened of the earth, you gotta admit that water sports and a dirty Sanchez are not barroom banter. <laughs> Although I've been known to mock what I don't understand, I don't judge you for your corporophilia and europhilia antics. Rock on with your fetishes if you want to. Pee on you, drip, drip, drip. Uh, but please, allow me to leave you with two key tips that will help you avoid that uncomfortable bitch slap and or the get the fuck out of here that you weren't expecting. Number one, consider your context. If you're naked with your partner, surrounded by a den of sex toys, it's probably safe to broach the topic of fetishes. Number two, tread lightly. Try leading in with questions like, so, um, What's your biggest fantasy? Or, what's the kinkiest thing you've ever done? <laughs> if, your if your partner's answer to either question is, I really love cuddling, um, hold off on the heavy stuff. you got to ease into that shit lightly and slowly. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, my friend, that's the advice that I have for you today. Best of luck to you with your watery and excremental adventures of yours, the funky brown chick. Woo!